fact that there are many, many other alternatives open to us to stopping cyber uh, maliciousness is absolutely accurate. He, he ran through a long list of things, whether ranging from more backups to better private uh, public partnerships to uh, increased uh, uh, security in the form of zero trust architecture, et cetera. That's all accurate. We've been trying to do that for years. It has not been successful, completely successful, partly successful. We need to redouble our efforts in that regard. Um, but I think Bob's point also is, is accurate too, and I, I take some shelter in that, which is that I think, I think both Travis's comments about what other things we can do and my proposal are complementary. I don't see them as mutually exclusive. Um, I was focused on a particular very pernicious type of activity, which is foreign malicious cyber activity that we cannot now effectively stop at our borders. That is not going to solve the entire cybersecurity problem. I do not purport that it, it will. It's not going to stop so-called zero-day exploits, bugs in software that nobody's ever heard of before. But it will make a big dent in criminal ransomware activity as it starts to spread from the first victim to the several hundred other victims. Um, and it will make a big dent in foreign uh, uh, intelligence operations as they as they sniff around our networks. So again, it's not a complete solution. Cybersecurity has, is a function of many, many vulnerabilities. Bob pointed that out too, as did Travis. And um, we need to throw everything we've got at it. And, and one of the things that we need to, one gap we need to fill is this gap in our, in our legal architecture that predates the cyber world. No surprise, but it's a big gap and, and I think they can be harmonized.